gracious and heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that you call us to be your servants, to go forth into the world. We thank you that you entrust us with your word. We thank you, Lord, for our eyes and hearts and ears when they're open to hear your word and receive it and embrace it. And Holy Spirit, move upon our hearts today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Question of the day to start us off. Are you ready? Question of the day. How many of you knew what you were going to be or wanted to be when you grew up? From the very, very beginning, when you were five years old, how many of you knew what you wanted to be? All right. There's a few of you that did. I won't go any further back than five years. How many times did that change? And I would ask this, did it come true for what you wanted to be? You know, God uses us in so many different ways. I mean, I remember there's a lot of kids who want to grow up be a fireman or a first responder, and, you know, I think that's great. There's some that want to be doctors and nurses or some that want to be I don't know why they want to be a lawyer but no I'm kidding but there's some who want to be certain things and they they really strive for it but then there's always little things that happen how many of you all had a job before you actually got to be where you wanted to be how many of y'all worked in McDonald's (laughs) no but we all had different jobs didn't we As we're growing up, we take different jobs, we take different courses in our lives, we do certain things. I mean, I worked an irrigation team when I was in um, New Mexico, when I was in high school. I also worked as a bagger in a grocery store and, you know, and I did various different jobs. I worked in a gas station. I worked in a lot of different jobs. And when I was nine years old, I said, Lord, I want to be a minister for you. But I had a lot of different jobs in between. I ended up in the military and serving time in there. I ended up working for a major corporation, a Fortune 500 company. I ended up getting downsized. I ended up going somewhere else. All of this happened and then God opened the door and says, here's now, you go to seminary. You all can relate to that, can't you? You have different jobs, different times, different places, different things, but it all leads to that time in which God calls you into ministry. And sometimes that happens when we're young and we start really observing the Lord, we know the Lord, and we start sharing. But it's finally when we get to that position that God calls us to that we can still be His ministers and His disciples. I say that because in all three of our texts today, the one from Isaiah, the one in Corinthians, and the one in the Gospel, each one of those had a different calling before God actually called them into ministry. Isaiah was called into ministry. And the one thing about it is each one realized that they were really unworthy to really serve God because they recognized who they were and their unworthiness. But you know the beauty of it is God ordained them. God changed them. God used them. And that's the beauty of today's message for us is hearing that call of God and being able to respond to it and then being able to share it with others and share His grace, His love, and His mercy. The Gospel this morning starts out with Jesus coming and preaching along the shorelines. Now, Jesus has been known throughout Galilee. He was baptized in Judea, went into Galilee, and he started preaching. We talked about the wedding of Cana not too long ago, where he turned water into wine. Last week, we talked about him going back to his hometown in Nazareth and actually getting run out of town because of what he said. But he did come and he gave them the hope that he came, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, not physically sight, but spiritually, 
insight as to what God is doing. He called on them to listen. He called on Isaiah to go out and preach and listen. But in all situations, they knew who they were in the presence of God. They knew that they were unworthy to stand before Him. And yet, God reaches down and grabs them and says, I will clean you up and I will send you out. Peter is a fisherman. We all know that. And so here's Jesus and he's standing along the side and people are listening to him. And have you ever been in a crowd and you hear somebody that's kind of really deep, you know, deep in the, and you're way back in the back? And so you nudge the person next to you and go, what's he saying? What's he saying? Come on, you know that, don't you? What's he saying? What's he saying? What, what's he, you know? Well, Jesus understood that. The crowds were coming. They'd heard about all the things that he'd been doing in Galilee. And so they were crowding him, trying to hear him, trying to get close to him. And there's the boat. And Jesus calls to Peter and says, let's set out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, when they set out on the water like that, right along the shore, all the people can gather around. And so Jesus can preach from the boat. And it acts kind of like an amphitheater where the sound really carries out so everybody can hear. You ever see somebody out in a boat and winds calm and all of a sudden they haul? That sound carries, doesn't it? I mean, I live not too far, well, I live probably about a mile or so from the train. But boy, when that train goes through in the middle of I hear it. You know, we can hear certain things when the air is right and that kind of thing. So Jesus is preaching. Now, Peter probably was pretty tired at this time. Because in those days, and how they fished was at night. The best fishing was at night. So they would cast out and they would work all night to bring their catch in. Whether they caught anything or not, but they worked all night trying to earn a living by casting their nets. So Peter's been, he worked the midnight shift, let's put it that way. And he's been up all night waiting and coming in. They have to clean their nets so that they don't break. And they're not small nets, they're huge nets. And then Jesus says, uh, by the way, can you just move out just a little bit from shore so I can teach? Imagine how tired Peter is. And he's been working, oh, okay, fine. He goes there, and we have no idea what Jesus was teaching from the shoreline that day. We don't know how long his sermon was. He could have been a good Pentecostal-style preacher and gone for 45 to 50, maybe 60 minutes. Now, if you didn't know that Bishop Curry, at his revival last Friday night, I downloaded his sermon or his his message... It was one hour. One for... But it captivated you. You didn't realize it was an hour long because of what he was saying and how he presented it. And that must have been what it was like for those who were listening to Jesus preach and Jesus teach because they were looking for the hope of Israel. They were looking for that Messiah. The one that had been foretold in Isaiah. The one who had been foretold through the prophets. They were looking for Him with that hope. And they placed their hope in Him. And when Jesus gets done teaching, He doesn't say, Peter, take me into shore. He says, Peter set out a little further into the depths. I don't know if you noticed how Peter responded to Jesus, but you can hear a little bit of discord in him, a little bit of, really, you want me to step out? You, Jesus, let me get this straight. You're a carpenter, you're a builder. I'm a fisherman, and I know how to fish. Peter set the boat out into the depths. And Peter's just one. Master, we have worked all night long and caught nothing, and yet you want us to go out? But he said one thing. Yet, 
If you say so, I will let down the nets. You see, that's the first thing. Peter responded. He hesitated. He drew back a little bit. Don't you know? We've worked all night, and yet you want us to continue. And he says, yet if you say so, I will. That's a response that we should all have to Jesus when he calls us to minister for him. That's what the response is that we should have when he wants to use us into ministry. Yes, if you say so, I will. Sometimes we look at our own condition and say, oh, I can't. Didn't you know what I've been through just lately? But you know the blessing of it is that when we do what God calls us to do, that we are blessed abundantly by Him. He fulfills every one of our needs. But we have to be willing to say, yes, if you say so, I will. That's the key to the relationship that we have with God, is saying yes to what He calls us to do. Peter hesitantly, maybe, set out. I can just imagine, okay, we're going to do it. You say so, I'm going to trust you, Master. We're going to go out and do it. And he lets down the net. And he has so much. It catches so much. That what does he have to do? He has to call his friends, doesn't he? And that happened to be James and John. And he called them to come and help him bring in this abundance of fish. This was not a normal time when fish were prevalent. It was not a normal time to catch fish. They shouldn't have caught anything. And yet they did. And Peter recognizes now that it's only by God's power and by God's hand that that could have been done. You see, sometimes we think we know more but God knows better. Sometimes we think we know more, but God ordains something else. And God provides for us. It was when they saw the abundance, the overabundance, more than they ever caught, that Peter sees who Jesus is. Not just as a man, but divine. And he kneels and he says, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man. He recognized who he was. He recognized his fallibilities. He recognized that he was not worthy to stand. And yet, what does Jesus say? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And that's what he does for us. We can say, I'm not worthy. I can't. I don't know how to do that. Lord, you're asking me, do you know my history? Lord, I know nothing about this area and you're asking me to go into this area? And yet, Jesus says, don't be afraid. Jesus calls us. In the reading from Isaiah, Isaiah is amongst Israel's people. He knows that they've fallen away from God. He knows that they're not worshiping Him anymore. Well, they are, but they're doing it just out of rote. And he's, the Lord gives him this vision and he sees this train and fills the temple, the glory of God, and he realizes that he's no different than the people around him. And he says, whoa, I am a man of unclean lips. Now here's the beauty of this. Is that once we recognize who we are, God can work in us. And so what he does is he takes the seraphim, takes the coal from the altar, touches his lips, and sanctifies him and makes him worthy to go out. And that's what God does in our lives. He makes us worthy to go out. Our reading in Corinthians is the same way. Paul knew the law. Paul knew all the scriptures. This was not the way it was supposed to unfold. How many of y'all said that to God sometimes? God, this isn't the way it should be. What does God say? Mm -hmm, yeah, it is. How many of you have ever told your kids, I don't, you know, I know a little bit better than you do. And they're like, mm-mm, no, you don't. Mm-mm. And then later on they go, wow, I sound just like my mom or just like my dad. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. This is the thing. 
is Paul knew what Scripture was. Paul had an idea of how it should have been. And this movement of Jesus and what happened, he went and he persecuted the church. He brought them back, threw them into prison because they were worshiping Jesus. And yet Jesus uses him. He has that Damascus Road experience to Saul. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? I am Jesus. His life was completely turned around. 180 he did. But you know that's the way God works in us too. But we have to be willing to say, okay. Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Peter was invited to not be fishers of, to be a fisherman, but to be the fisher of people, to go out and share the good news about what Jesus was doing, about the kingdom of God being near. And Paul, who persecuted the church, did a 180 and shared God's glory of the resurrection and what God did through His Son Jesus to us. I want to share something that came out of Tozer. And I think it says it all to us. It says this, When we glimpse who God is in Scripture, and God reveals Himself in Scripture to us, it can cleanse away our inflated self-importance and the insufficiencies of our lip service in worship. But it also can give us a clear picture of what is truly valuable in this life. It changes the way we live, the way we do business, the way we worship. When we understand who God is and where we stand in relationship, we come out a different person. Isaiah came out a different person. He realized where he stood in relationship to God. Peter understood where he stood in relationship with Jesus. And Paul understood where he st- his relationship. And God used each and every one. And he'll use you in the same way. There's many who have gone before. There's many who have served God in so many different ways. Dietrich Bonhoeffer during World War II was a strong Christian. And he spoke about Christianity outwardly. And he was captured by the Nazis. He was thrown into prison. And he continued to preach the gospel in prison. But he died in prison because they hanged him. But the message that Dietrich Bonhoeffer gave was a message that changed lives. What is God calling you to do? He's calling you to let down the net so that you can share His grace, His love, and His mercy with someone. That you can share how God is working in your life or the life of others so that they may have hope. But it requires us to do the same and say the same things that Peter did. If you say so, I will let down the nets. Jesus says, follow me. I'll make you fishers of people. And our response should be, if you say so, I will follow you. Amen. We have two that are licensed lay Eucharistic visitors that are going out today. Kay will be going to see Janet and Edie will be going to see Gordon. Gordon is in a nursing home or assisted living up in uh, Palm Bay and Janet is at home recovering and so we are sending them out. They will share the same Eucharistic feast that we partook of today at the Lord's table. They will share the message of hope that we have in Jesus in calling us to be his disciples. And they will share our love and prayers that are continually lifting up um, to God on their behalf. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mission and ministry that Kay and Edie have been called to. 
We thank you, Lord, for their hearts to serve those who cannot be here. You said where two or three are gathered, in their, that you are in their presence. So, Lord, we lift them up to you. And we pray, Lord, that anyone else who may be there may also experience your grace, your love, and your mercy. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter made a great statement. Peter said, Go away from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. He recognized his position at that time, but Jesus elevated him to a different position. And he said that, Don't be afraid. For now you from now on you will be catching people. When he asked him to push out in the boat earlier, he said, If you say so, I'll let down the nets. Paul went and served God throughout all of the area, from Corinth to Athens to Thessalonica. When God called him, he said, Yes. Isaiah said, Woe is me, I am a man of unclean lips. He recognized who he was, and God said, This is who you are, and put the thong, the coal from the altar on his lips and purified him. He called him to do that. What will your call be? Will you let down the nets? Will you go? Will you say, Here I am, send me? Because when we answer yes to Jesus, we can go into the world in peace. We will be of good courage because he's with us. We will hold fast that which is good. We will render no one evil for evil. We will strengthen the faint-hearted. We will support the weak. We will help those who are afflicted. We'll always honor all persons. And why? Because we love and serve the Lord. Because we can rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Isaiah said, Here I am, send me. Our going forth song today is, Here I am, send me. Yeah.